Teacher of Fly Fish Food with skill builder number seven. This week, we're gonna show you the proper way to do pinch wraps. Ice stub is the bane of everybody's existence on the desk. We're gonna show you how to get it nice and tight. And finally, the battle of the elk hair caddis. Do you cut the head first or you tie it in and cut it later? I'm team cut it later. Watch the video and see why. So to demonstrate a pinch wrap, I'm going to show you this with some chenille or some marabou. We, we have a few different things over here. So the idea is this. So as I'm wrapping my thread, I have tension on my thread. And if I were to hold material there, the tension of my thread just pushes that around. It's not going to catch it, okay? Like that. And even if I do like a loose wrap and then catch it, it's still going to want to pull that around on the other side of the hook. Then you have to come in here and adjust it all up. Okay, so I'm going to show you what's called a pinch wrap. So if I were going to tie in this piece of chenille, um, typically I would, you know, clean out a spot for it. There's a little core. You can see that against the, my hand. And I'm going to want to tie those in right here. Okay, so if I were to come back here and take my thread back where I want to tie that in, and I just held it here, and I pushed with the tension, it's not going to allow me to tie it in, okay? So I'm going to grab hold of that chenille right here, right where I want to tie it in with my fingers, and I'm just going to pinch the top of the hook shank, okay? I'm going to bring the thread up between into my fingers. See, there's no tension on my thread now. And then straight down on the other side, and don't let go. Hold on to it. Now do that one more time. Up between your fingers and down, okay? Now, just with those two wraps, if I wrap the rest of that forward, my chenille is tied perfectly in on top of the hook shank and a pretty durable tie-in as well. Okay, so what that looks like with marabou would be kind of the same thing. Let's say that we're going to tie this clump of marabou in. Okay, I'm just going to hold that where I want it because again, if I push it, it's not going to wrap. So, I'm going to grab it kind of where I want to tie it in, and I'll show you from the top angle this time. I'm just going to pinch that straight down, straight up between my fingers, straight down the other side. Straight up between my fingers, straight down the other side. And now, if I want to make my thread wraps go further back, that's fine. But I'm going to grab onto these materials and keep them tight, wrap those back, and now you should just be able to do touching turns forward, and you're tied in. Anyway, that's the proper way to do a pinch wrap. You can do it with almost any type of fly tying material that there is. Okay, ice stub, demystifying ice stub. Here we have some fancy orange thread in the bobbin. We have just a random hook in the vise, and I've got this gnarly stuff known as ice stub. Okay, this is a very common question we get in the shop, and so we're going to show you the easiest way to get it super, super tight. And it does involve a dubbing twister. You can use uh, either the Smeyan flavor, the CNF. Those are my two favorites, but whatever you like, go for it. All right, so here we have C or, uh, some ice dub, and it's notoriously difficult to wrap on, on, the, on the thread, okay? We're going to do a full dubbing tutorial or full dubbing primer um, in one video, but I'm just going to show this, this technique because it's so easy and it will help a ton of people, all right? So, let's say that that's, as, that that's as tight as you can get your ice stub. That is not very tight at all, okay? So, no big deal. What I can do now is I can just close that off, okay? We made a dubbing loop, but one side's dubbed. It doesn't have anything in the middle of it. Then take your dubbing twister, and as you can see, I left about two inches or so worth of extra thread so that when I put my my tool in I can leave it on my finger and let it hang like a pendulum okay so once I have it here and my, my dubbing is even looser now than it was when I when I first did it but if I twist that up it looks like we're pro status okay so let me show you what that looks like when I wrap it so you can get your ice dub nice and tight and even if you want you can come in here with your scissors after you tie it in and get that to be as tight as possible. Now, if you do this with your ice stub, it's gonna it's gonna make it a lot more durable as well. So anyway, don't be frustrated with ice stub anymore. 
You can do it with ice dub or with whatever dubbing you can't get tight. This is the best way to do it. The Elk Hair Caddis. Big debate. When you're tying in the wing, do you trim it before you tie it in or do you trim it afterward? I am squarely on team trim it afterward. And I'm going to show you a really cool way to lock in a deer hair head, elk hair head, whatever kind of hair you're using on a fly like this. So let's get started. Here I have just like a size 14 elk hair caddis. I've used some bright neon. What is this stuff? Fluorescent green thread from Semperfly. Um, and a little hack here is a lot of times I like to use their 12 aught for tying, um, you know, most general nymphs. It's a 70 denier thread. So that's going to work with the Uni 8 aught, um, the 70 denier UTC. However, the 8 aught in Semperfly is a is 105 denier. So you don't have to jump all the way to 140 or 136 or whatever they may be. This A dot is 100 denier, and I found it to be the perfect strength for tying in deer hair wings. And like if you're doing a lot of stimulators, that would be the good thread. All right, so now that that's out of the way, let's see. So you can see I left a little bit of a, a base for the head. You really don't need any space at all because it's going to suck right down where that thread is. The next thing, find a good patch of hair. You know, elk hair caddis does not have to be elk hair. You can do it out of deer. You can do it out of antelope, caribou, moose, whatever you want. Elk hair is my favorite. And I like these Nature Spirit Select Cow Elk patches. You can see on this one, all those little black tips against my finger are nice and small. They're all roughly the same length. So let's farm some of this out of here and, and tie it in. So uh, the main thing that you hear on an elk hair caddis is people say, well, my wing won't stay on top of the hook. And we'll show you a way to, to, to make sure that happens. The main reason that happens is people are using too much hair. So um, we're going to get, if, if you're not quite sure, get more than you think you need and then just trim it out. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get the hair that I want and open up my scissors and mash them down against the hide and trim it off. So here I've got a pretty healthy clump of deer hair. Um, let's say I don't want that much. So I'm going to get rid of that. And it, there's really no good way to know how much elk hair or deer hair you want because that looks pretty thick right there, but when I run a comb through that, it's going to get a whole bunch of that gunk out of there. So again, you can roll your fingers and, and clean it that way, but look how much stuff came out of that little chunk of hair. That's critical to get it out of there. And with this select cow elk, it comes out pretty, pretty easily. So, you know, if I put that on there, yeah, that, that looks like a good amount for a wing. So I'll just put those in my, my hair stacker. So the way I'm going to do that is put it at an angle, kind of rotate the, my hand around that stacker, and then just gently nudge them in. Give it a few packs. Unlike the big deer hair streamer heads, you really don't need to mash down on this. And it's also important enough or important to use um, a packer that's going to allow your hair to expand. Okay, If you're jamming it down into a smaller packer, a little micro packer, the hair can't move around in there. And in order for them to be all aligned at the bottom, they have to be, be able to move around and spread out. So that's how this works. All right, once we have those all stacked nicely, I'm gonna pull those out facing the direction I want them to go. So I'm just gonna go like that. Voila, look at that, aligned tips, looks great. I'm gonna be handling this a lot with my offhand, so that's how I'm gonna grab them out of there. And if I need to, to switch back and forth, Real easy, just make sure you have a nice firm grip on these hairs before you move them back and forth. And as I do this, I think I still maybe am a little bit too thick on the hair, so I'm gonna peel a few of them off, just like that. Get rid of those. All right, so now I'm ready to tie in. Um, for this, I see a lot of people trimming their, their hackle at an angle. Guess what? It's not gonna matter whatsoever. Just put your hair on and, and tie it in. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set this. I'll try to turn the vise. And, and just as a reminder, we do these at a wider angle and from a top angle on purpose. We do have videos that will show very up close and tight on how to tie an elk hair caddis. Just look for it in our site. These skill builders are more for the skill. So it's going to show my hands. It's going to show a wider angle. 
And you can also grab your YouTube screen and go like screen and go like this. Whoop. And guess what? Now you're wide. Try that with me right now. Put your fingers on the screen. Wide, not wide. Wide, not wide. Tech tips from Cheech. That's going to be our next series. All right. <laughs> Through all this, I've been able to maintain those those fibers. This looks like a little paintbrush head. Okay. So I'll grab my thread that it's been resting over against the vise ever so nicely to not annoy us while we tie. Okay, so we're ready to tie this in. I'm just going to place this on top of the hook like this and grab it with my offhand. I am not going to let go of that tension for, for a, a bit, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up in between my fingers. See that? That's a pinch wrap. We went over that one in one of the skill builders. And I'm just going to come down on the other side putting very, very slight pressure on. You can see that as I start to put pressure on it, it starts to flare, okay? So right as it starts to flare, I wanna back off my pressure and just tie another loop on there, okay? On my third turn, I'm gonna pull down fairly hard, not super hard, but it's gonna flare all that hair. So anytime I'm holding on to my bobbin, I'm holding on to the wing with my finger. If I let go of that wing, I gotta make sure that my bobbin is not under pressure so I can let it go. If I were to pull on my bobbin down, it would rotate that wing around, okay? That's what causes your wing to, to move around the hook is when you're putting pressure on your bobbin, you're not holding the back of the wing, okay? So now we have this big mess in front of the fly and we're gonna use this as an opportunity to make this fly way more durable than your run-of-the-mill elk hair caddis. So I'm gonna grab roughly one-third of these fibers and I'm gonna do two wraps in front of those and then I'll grab another third of the fibers, some more wraps, and then I'll grab the final amount and now I'm at the front of the, the hook. You can see I've got a real nice clean tie down. You can see the, the chartreuse thread. Maybe this needs to be a thing, Brig. Hot the hot spot caddis. All right, so they have a little hackle fiber there that's got an attitude problem, but don't look at that. This is we're looking at the hair, okay? All right. So now how do you whip finish this? Okay. So the first thing I do is I grab the hair and kind of pull it out of the way. Okay. So you you have to do that while you're messing with the whip finisher as well. So just like a normal whip finish, I'm going to start it down here, but as soon as I'm ready to pull my thread back, I'm going to grab my thread, my my uh, my hair as well, and I'm just going to hold that out of the way, and then release it when my knot's done. So that's that motion of getting your whip finisher ready, and right here is when you pull your fingers and hold everything back. It works really well for for any type of fly that has a bunch of junk coming out the head. All right. So there we have it, it's tied off. Now we're gonna separate all those butts from the tips. You can, I mean, this doesn't have to be super, super precise and clean because once I put that cut in there, it's gonna make it look clean. So I'll grab that and I'll just make, I'll cut it just one time. See how I have one butt there? Instead of going in with my fingers again, I can just grab that and pull that out of there. So there you have it. That's a really good, durable elk hair caddis wing, floats well, and the fish definitely won't tear it up. If you like these skill builders, we do these every single week. So you could be getting notifications saying, hey, you're gonna learn something about fly tying. So make sure you subscribe.